Welcome to Fandom and Wellness, a podcast about the complex relationship between fandom and mental health. Disclaimer, we are not psychiatrists or psychologists. We are just fangirls with a vested interest in mental health. I'm Arkita, and on this episode, we have two very special guests with us. Uh, we'd like to welcome Jamila and Eileen. Hi. Hi, I'm Jamila. Hi, I'm Eileen. Uh, so... When we have a guest on, we like to ask them their pronouns. Mine are she, her, hers. What do you go by? Uh, I go by she, they. And I'm uh, she, her. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I invited you both on the podcast to talk about Geek Girl Brunch and how it creates a space, a safe space for women and non-binary people. Uh, Jamila is the co-founder of Geek Girl Brunch, and Eileen is one of the current officers of the New York City branch. Um, I know that we've talked about Geek Girl Brunch a couple of times on the podcast, and we just want to, you to get to know who these people are and how this all started. So, Jamila, can you let us know how and why Geek Girl Brunch was created? Yeah, so I'm really happy to be here. Um, me, Yasel, and Rachel created Geek Girl Brunch years ago because we it started really organically. We all lived in New York City, and... Um, saw each other at sort of like geek events, but didn't end up meeting outside of that. And we really wanted to find an excuse to hang out because we were, you know, internet friends that lived in the same city. Like we should hang out and become IRL friends. So um, we started to do that and we started dressing up and give themes to things and cosplay because we just love like any excuse to dress up. And um, we would share it on social and people would be like, oh, my God, that looks like so much fun. Oh, it's so cool. And we would go to like specific um, like shops or locations that were like related to the theme. So we were like really like doing the most <laughs> with our little brunches and um, and then drunk by like <laughs> comic, too many comic books <laughs> because of our boozy brunches. Um, so it was a really great time. And after it was a doctor who brunch that we had, and it was just us three. And we were like, you know what, like, let's make this a thing. Like, you know, this is really awesome for us. And people seem to be interested, we should make like geek girl brunch a thing. And I just um, named a geek girl brunch by like adding a hashtag in the beginning, like before even thinking about this becoming an official, um, like group or organization. So it was all very organically and it was created because of the need for it. We know how awful a lot of spaces in geek culture are to women and non-binary folks, whether in person or online. And we wanted to have a, a space and an event that people could like come and meet others that are like them because we know how much we love talking about geek culture. It's such a big part of our lives. But sometimes if you don't have friends who are into the same things you are, it just feels like this big hole in your life that you don't really get to talk about. Um, so we, we wanted to nurture friendships um, because we knew how, um, how necessary a space like that, that felt safe and welcoming um, was. So yeah, it started in New York. And, um, and then people were like, I want this in my city. So we were like, okay. okay. <laughs> and so that's how that happens. So New York is, is the OG first chapter. It's just huge, huge chapter. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of our, our origin story. <laughs> that's really cool. That's really cool. Cause I'm also part of the New York City chapter. Yeah. And that's when I went to my first brunch was like, yeah. however many years ago. Oh um, that's right. So talking about how it got, into the other cities like what was the process of getting it all started over there there was a lot of um like organization and strategy and figuring out like okay how can we help widen the reach of geek girl brunch but also make make us able to like help manage these other chapters and like give them advice and how like creating this network of not just like the geek girl brunch members, but now these officers. So we use things like um, Facebook groups to help uh, communicate with everybody and, um, and having a, like having forms online for not just members, but people who are interested in starting a chapter. Um, but we also had to sit down and like, think about, especially because New York, we already immediately had officers. Like we didn't have to sit and think like how it would run. We knew 
we could do it ourselves because we have been and then we could have more people come. But it was like, all right, now what are the rules in general? Like how many officers do we want per chapter? And those officers are going to be the ones who run their chapters. Like how many um, do we want to exist before it launches? Because if it's just one officer, it's a lot, it could be a lot of work depending on how big your chapter is. And we were trying to prevent people from um, like leaving as an officer and then sort of having just these members who are waiting for somebody else to pick up that home. So it was a lot of, of thought process and we've changed it. Uh, we changed it over the years a little bit to accommodate, you know, the things that we like the insights that we gained from our officers and members. Um, but it was, it wasn't, um, it wasn't easy for sure, especially because we grew like, really rapidly um it was yeah <laughs> yeah it was a lot of work but it was it was super worth that's it that's really cool and i think it's really cool that you have other chapters throughout not only the states but also other countries because whenever i look up to travel i always look like what other geek girl brunch events are happening in those cities that i'm traveling to especially whenever i go cheer up because i'm always i love to travel and sometimes i just want to meet other geeky folks that are very similar and like-minded to myself so that's that's one thing that I really yeah like. I was able to go to one in Germany which was super cool uh it was like really surreal too <laughs> what about you Eileen what's your first what was your first experience with Geek Girl Brunch um so I came across uh, a Geek Girl Brunch like invitation on tumblr um i had just gotten oh. back from california and i believe it was their marvel brunch um actually it was it was the marvel brunch um <laughs> and it was like i had forwarded it to my friend and i was like hey we should totally go to this it seems like super cool um and of course i forgot to sign up but my friend did um <laughs> and she was like hey like i put an extra spot for you so like please come with me like so i'm not going alone Aww. um and it was really fun um, and it's one of my better experiences in the city because I just remember like it was like these huge tables. It was like we were super just like just talking and like having a good time. And I didn't even think about the fact that like I didn't know any of these people. I had just met these people <laughs> and I was just like going deep into like my first comic book and my first experience with Marvel and like, oh, Team Iron Man or like whatever we were doing. <laughs> and um, it was just really super cool. And I think afterwards on that one, there was a shield thing, if that was not another one. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, it was really fun because I was like, I, like, we hung around outside. Um, I, re I think it was like Southern Comfort um, and just talked and talked and like made friends and made connections. And already I was like, oh, when is the next one? Like, when can I see these people again? It was really, really, really enjoyable. Yeah. I think that's one of the fun parts about Geek Girl Brunch is that. After the brunch officially ends, it doesn't actually end because you still get to see these people and you know that even outside of this, you've made this connection with them and you're still going to be able to see them again because I feel as though that's something that's happened throughout the years. Um, so Eileen, how many years have you been a part of Geek Girl Brunch? I do not actually remember. So whenever <laughs> that brunch was... It was probably like the second year it started technically no no i'm lying it was the first yeah. year i wanna say like 2015 2014 2014, 2014. Yeah, was, yeah so oh my gosh yeah six it years this summer for a yeah. while that's wild no <laughs> i i love it because i just came up on my fifth year anniversary because it shows you when it's like oh, look back yay. on your memories and my first oh, brunch yes. yeah it was the oh. bad girl brunch and that's where i met most yes, of you because yes. that was the biggest thing i've ever seen it was like i think Giselle was also there and Rachel was also, mm -hmm. there, also there mm -hmm. and they were talking about the count and how it was like 60 people showed up and at the time I was seeing someone who's like there's no way there's that many geeky girls that are in one area and I was like Boo. let me take a selfie with everyone <laughs> behind me right now and show them this picture the last time I checked uh, before I uh, stepped down as like or like managing Geek Girl Brunch um, we had 12,000, over 12,500 members. Well, you know, shout out to that because that's an amazing number. And I think it really speaks to how much of a community 
that you've mm-hmm. all built to make this a safe space for people to come and enjoy and share their love of like comics and fandom. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's an awesome time. It absolutely is an awesome time. Um, so why do you think it's important to create this safe space for geeky women and non-binary folks? We need like spaces where we can like let our figure to pare down and not worry about being like oppressed or attacked or harassed or anything like that. And we can truly just like let that wall down and nurture friendships and meet new people and, and talk about stuff that you really love. Um, there's not a lot of places that we can do that, at, especially within the geek space, because mo- unless it's a private group online, <laughs> like trolls are out there and they will find you. They'll do searches to just like look and harass uh, women and non-binary folks. So it's like to have an in-person event, where you don't have to worry about that stuff or even like at conventions, you know, conventions are kind of that in person. (laughs) People may not say stuff to you, but they'll physically, they can physically touch you. They can say things to you. Um, And it can be really like an awful, overwhelming experience. So having a place where you don't have to worry about that and you can still like engage with the things that you love and meet new people who love it too um, is really necessary (laughs) agreed what about you eileen um for me it's this yeah basically the same thing i think like the i had gone to a con right before geeko brunch um and i've been pretty lucky that like my friend group has been like pretty diverse in um like especially like my geeky friends because like you, you always you always have those moments where like you think like oh i'm the only one and it kind of fosters this weird relationship in your head where you're like i think i'm special because i'm like the only girl in my group but then you're like wait actually mm. like no there's different people that love different things and there's different levels of geekdom um so i was pretty lucky but i was at a con and um not to brag, but I do have a very big knowledge of certain geeky things, especially when it comes to comic books. Um, and I always get challenged at cons. Mm-hmm. And it became one of those moments where, like, at first I used to take it, like, as a pride thing. I'm like, yeah, like, I'm going to show you that I'm super knowledgeable. But after a while, I'm just like, I just want to connect. And I don't want to be challenged. And I don't want you to think, like, oh, because you don't know this one particular thing, like, you're not as much of a geek as I am. And then I'm then hyper focusing on making sure that I know all the details like because if this guy is going to try to like come at me with this um like I'm gonna just like show him that I'm truly the one the one geek of them all um and so like when I was at that Marvel brunch and I was just like discussing with people about what their favorite moments were like why certain things meant the things they did to them it it, like helped me see it was like no I don't always have to be on edge um and I don't always have to be like making sure that I'm like just like the perfect amount of geek and like that I can actually like, I know all the things that I'm supposed to know. Um, And it it also like, it helps me read like branch out to new things because I'm just like, Oh cool. Like I don't have to fully invest myself in order to enjoy it. I can just be casual. And then there'll be a friend that is going to give me more insight. I think that's one of the reasons that um, why it's so important to create safe space, especially for geeky women, geeky non-binary folks, because like so much of us, our time is spent like having to perfect something or like having to present mm-hmm. in some way that when you get mm-hmm. to be comfortable in who you are and how you present your geekdom, like you get to explore so much more of yourself in that as well. True. Well, Eileen. And Jamila, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I guess the next thing I want to ask, because I know this this organization, this group has had such a big impact on me and my life, would be how has Geek Girl Brunch affected your lives? Oh, wow. Um, it's been uh, such a source of like joy and pride. And sometimes it gets like overwhelming because some it sometimes it feels unbelievable. It's this weird bit of like, I'm like, I can't believe that this is, you know, grown so much. But then I also, on the other hand, know how needed it was. And it's just proof of how needed it was by how much it's grown across like the world. Um, it, what is extra special to me really are like the connections that have been made. Um, my favorite thing is seeing people post like 
stuff on social when they're hanging out with somebody that they met at Gabriel Brunch, like not at a brunch. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they're <laughs> friends. Or I've like heard about folks like starting businesses and podcasts and collaborating together. And just like, it's just so amazing. It makes me feel so good. Um, and I will, I will never like forget or take, take for granted, like how, um, impactful this has been, not in just my life, but I know others as um, well. I think for me, it's been, it's been one of the more impactful things. I forgot the word for a second. I apologize. I was like, what <laughs> is this? Um, impactful things in the, at least the last couple of years. Um, just cause like, I was coming out of like a bad place when I found Geek Girl Brunch um, and it helped me find some of my closest friends that I have to this day. And just like, also it, it's really interesting because like I've always been super into like geekdom, but I never delved past like the layer, like into fandom fandom. Um, so I didn't know about people like that created things for, um, for geeky things. I didn't know about cosplay. I didn't know about like really going to cons. Like I, I had just gone to NYCC and was like, Oh, this is cool. Like people do fan things that I've only really seen on like Tumblr at a glance. Um, and I think being able to like physically interact with people and actually get like their opinions about things or like discuss things in like a, a much deeper manner in person and somewhere you feel safe, like really helped me branch out into the things that like I enjoyed and things that I was willing to like invest my time in and like, oh, like this person is saying like this person does really cool clothing and I'm going to check it out. And like now most of my clothing clothing is from Jordan and it's like things like that where I'm just like it's slowly it's it's kind of integrated into each part of my life but in the, like one of the best ways possible agreed i have the same experience um well for one one of the officers you too we go, we went to dragon con together and that's like one of been the one that's been one of the most fun experience i've ever had and not only that yeah. through geek girl brunch we've created these strong uh emotional bonds and friendships that we're willing to travel with each other and do things and we want to hang out with each other outside of brunches and we've done so much collaborative works and i will say that one of the reasons why this podcast started it was because me danielle and jenny all kind of met through connections of geek girl brunch so in a lot of ways geek girl brunch helped create this podcast or at least bring us together so that way Ooh. this could form Yay. Thanks to you. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, thanks to you all. And I will honestly say Geek Girl Brunch has been one of the most positive things in my life. And I joined at a time where I definitely really needed it because I had come back from college and had little to no friends. I was like still trying to find my way around the city or find my way back around the city because I am from here, but I spent four years away and it's like, I was in a very difficult relationship and sometimes you need friends and friends help you see things in yourself that you didn't know before. And having a friend group knowing that it's with people that aren't going to challenge you so you can let your figurative hair down, it it helps you to be more vulnerable and in the moment instead of feeling guarded and defended and like you have to be challenged. Strong friendships are very important, especially for your emotional well-being. A lot of research shows that happiness in your friendships leads to better self-esteem and a stronger sense of purpose. And I will say being an adult makes it kind of harder to make friends and keep friends because as we get older, there are different aspects of our life that take priority, such as like work, family, kids, caring for people. And so friendships tend to take a back burner. And that's what's so important about Geek Girl Brunch is it allows you to take a moment to foster those relationships and even create new ones that will last through adulthood. Yeah, exactly. It's just having those friends there that you know like okay i'm not gonna see them all the time and but knowing that they're there for you and that like you'll get to see them at a next brunch if maybe you haven't spoken in a while i feel like becomes a good icebreaker for you to learn how to prioritize your friendships um especially when you are like feel like you have to prioritize something else you start to create these friendships where 
they become deeper in a sense of we are aware that we're not going to see each other all the time um, and that maybe things will come up, but that there'll be a moment where we can just break the ice once again and get the ball rolling. True. Yeah, for sure. I like I moved to Miami a couple years ago and it has been hard to make friends as an adult and I've never had to do that uh, in a sort of non-organic way. Uh, it would, but it's just like, I'd see somebody, I'm like, oh man, they look like cool. Or look, they got a geek shirt. Like, I like that thing too. I want to be their friend. Like, how do I do this? (laughs) Um, (laughs) and I just never do anything. Um, and it sucks because then I don't have any like friends, like close friends that are in the same city as me. So, um, but we have geek girl brunch and that's always a thing that I, felt like, oh, well, it's okay, because, like, I got Geek Girl Brunch down here in Miami, or, like, just being able to, like, have people come together, and you know that they're also maybe interested in being friends, at least definitely interested in talking about some geek stuff, um, it's made it a lot easier to give those, like, sort of put everybody in the right place with, that are like-minded, and seeing what happens Absolutely. after that. and knowing that it is so hard to create friendships as an adult, like how have you, like how do you each tend to like foster your own relationships with your friends? Group chat helps me a lot. Um, especially since a lot of my like friends that I've had for over 10 years live in New York. Um, I'm always in our WhatsApp chat. And so that helps me feel less away from everybody and also stay updated on like the jokes and what's going on in everybody's life. And we can give like longer updates with voice notes. So that's been really helpful for me. Um, for me, I've been, <laughs> I've been known to be not aggressive, but just being like, Hey, you're gonna, we're gonna be friends and we're gonna find something to like get closer to. But group chats, um, I've become a fan of Discord recently. Um, just because. Yeah. It's so much, it's so much easier to like be like, cause like sometimes in group chats, I'll get overwhelmed and it'll be like five messages and I don't know what's happening anymore. But Discord is really great about, especially like with geeky friends uh, about having different like channels for different um, subjects. So even if like people are talking about something that I'm like not completely interested in, I don't feel like I'm ignoring the conversation and probably me probably missing something that i'm interested in instead i'm just like okay i don't have to worry about that channel i'll focus on the channels that i do like and then there's general chats where we can all come together and like make plans um so but in terms of like creating friendships i've always been very good about being like hey we're gonna be friends and you either accept it or you don't (laughs) <laughs> I, I will say it's one of those things where an extrovert meets an introvert and it's like well now you're my friend so you can't make a choice <laughs> i mean you can totally make a choice no but you, yes no people is- t- all my friends have choices i'm just very much of like hi you're pretty and you're funny and i want to be your friend um <laughs> come with me um in a non-creepy guy with candy in his van kind of way you know what I said in a non-creepy way. In a a non-creepy. So like an ice cream truck, right? (laughs) Yes. Oh, my God. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Oh, my God. So sticking to female friendships, what are some of your favorite fandoms or female and non-binary friendships in fandom? Um... I really love friendship in anime. <laughs> like, that's, like, my, oh, my gosh. Like, if an anime has, like, a really strong friendship that, and friends vocalize it to each other, that is my, like, soft spot. Same. Um, so most of the, like, boy anime, like, shonen anime I watch is, like, um, I love the crybabies who love their friends. But as far <laughs> as the girls go, um, I think a recent one has been um, – Fruits Basket, because I mean, I watched the, the like, reboot, um, and I love how different um, they all are. It, like, there's Toro, Saki, who's, like, her goth friend, and then Arisa, who's, like, the, like, thug kind of, like, delinquent friend, um, and they're so very different, completely different, but they love each other hard. And it makes me so happy. Um, so they're like a, they're top of mind for me when it comes to like female non-binary friendships. What about you, Eileen? 
I was actually going to agree completely. Uh, <laughs> no, because like, so it's Fruits so Basket good. is one of my top. Um, and then the other one was like, and I talk about this all the time, is Card Captor Sakura. Yes! Um, because like the whole, like all of it was mostly about friendships and the different kinds of love that there is. Um, and I'm a very big believer in like loving people like in different forms um so the like i watch shonen's because i love uh action but like the only like guy quote unquote um animes that were like that had that same level of friendship for me which um is roni kenshin which the creator kind of ruined but in its oh. core <laughs> um it was about someone who like was made to do one thing his whole life and then like through the power of friendship and love figured out another way to live um and so like those were very always so interesting for me um it's why i love like tri the trios in star wars um because they're always mm -hmm. about friendship um even like the prequel who is the tragic trio of them all um at its core was about like their friendship and their love for each other and it was just like being taken to a horrible place but i am like i will not cry on most things but if you give me some good good friendship and maybe that good good friendship has to go away for a while i'm looking at you on my block I will oh, cry. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no, no, don't get, no, we can't get emotional. No. They'll come oh back. Oh my gosh. Come I just back. finished it on Sunday and I was crying. <laughs> Ugly crying on my couch. Oh my goodness. But no, those, those are some really good friendships. I enjoy them. So now we're going back to the brunch and the whole friendships that have started. How does someone start a chapter in their city if there isn't already one? Um, so the way it goes is they can go to the, um, website, um, Geek Girl Brunch, uh, and they can request, um, information, if I'm not mistaken. It might have changed. I know there's been a couple of changes recently, so actually I will let Jimmy that talk while I look this up to make sure that I'm giving the right information. Um, yeah, I don't know either because <laughs> I recently, what was it, last year, me, Yasel, and Rachel stepped um, down as, like, overall managing it as, like, HQ just because, um, well, this is more background, but, like, it was a lot of work and um, we also wanted other, like, a new... <laughs> not a new generation, but like, like fresher eyes and new people to be a part of it. Okay. Well, so I looked it up. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. It's the same mostly. Um, so yeah, so you go to geekgirlbrunch.com um, and you go to chapters um, and you see if you don't have a chapter located near you and you would like to start one, you would contact geekgirlbrunch.com um hq at gmail.com for more information um they will then like give you a pamphlet about things that the resources that they provide um you'll get invited into the facebook group for all the officers which is one of the best resources um because sometimes it is like you get burnout and you don't know um how to like launch something or you're just like hey we've done like we've been doing like brunches for a while and maybe we keep hitting the same theme over and over again how do people revisit a theme or how what are some new themes that people might be interested in um and how do people do favors or like the swag or just like activities that um help like people that are introverted feel more comfortable or ways to break the ice and so it's a it's a great resource um so that one you don't feel alone because it's a big community and two you get like new ideas and new ways of how people interact and what brunches work for people and just it's it's a great resource so like if you look at the chapters and you realize there's not one near you and you would like to do one um definitely go to the website uh email hq and don't be scared to start it because there's a lot of resource and there's a lot of us uh, around and we're more than happy to help out. Thank you for sharing that. And I'll be sure to add that in the notes when this gets released. So for anyone that is seeing this, they'll have like a direct link to the email 
and the website. So that way, if they're listening and they want to start a chapter in their city, they can. So Eileen, when is the next New York City brunch and what's going to be the theme? Okay, so with the current situation, um, the next theme is uh, video games. Um, We are now kind of um, looking to see if we postpone it um, towards the end of April, just because the current situation in New York City makes it a little hard to plan things at the moment. A lot of uh, restaurants are takeout only, and we don't know how long this is going to last. If the ban lifts and the CDC says that it is okay to meet in groups, then we'll plan for it. But we are also looking to make things virtual um, and making something fun out of it, like maybe sharing recipes of our favorite brunch uh, items um, because I like to cook and so give people a little insight on that and then maybe do some like virtual games on Twitch or something of the other. So at the moment it's kind of up in the air, but it's going to be video games for our next brunch. Okay, that's really cool. And for anyone that isn't aware of the current situation, is COVID-19 and New York City is technically supposed to be self-quarantined, but it's very hard with a lot of financial and employment situations. But I really do look forward to the virtual brunches because I think that with social distancing, that's going to become more of a thing. And not only mm-hmm. that, we it's fun to have internet friends. Like your internet friends are your real friends and that's just how I see it. And even though we may all know each other IRL, I'll say that with Geek Girl Brunch, I've been a part of it for five years, and I feel as though there's a new generation of brunchers that are coming that I've never seen before when I do get the opportunity to go. So who knows? Maybe the next virtual one, I'll be able to see someone that I've never met before. Yeah, no, Yay. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited because um, I've been doing a bunch of virtual hangouts with friends. Um, I started watching The Next Generation because I've never seen Star Trek before with friends. Um, and yeah, it helps because I'm I'm super extroverted, um, and it's been really it it really weighs down on me men- in, my, in my mental health um, when I am not able to see or at least. Um, talk to people for long periods of time um and so like i've been going outside taking walks keeping my distance um but being able to like watch something new and still experiencing it with friends and being able to hear their voices as we watch has been really nice um so i'm also excited for a lot of like whatever virtual brunches we do and keeping very hopeful in that we will still be able to do meetups of some kind, even if like the city does go on shutdown and it goes on for a little bit longer, that we will still be able to do things that keep people's spirits up, um, that people are able to come and meet and congregate in a way that even though it's may not be physical, is still social. And again, this goes back to having created this community and the safe place for geeky women and non-binary folks to be able to do that because I know in a lot of online chat rooms, whether you're playing video games on the whichever room you you use, you can be targeted and discriminated against and also challenged. And that's not good for your mental health, especially in the state of emergency that we're in right now. So where can anyone listening find you online? I am uh, on my name everywhere, <laughs> jamilarouser.com, J-A-M-I-L-A-R-O-W-S-E-R.com, Twitter, Instagram. That's it, actually. <laughs> and Eileen, for Geek Girl Brunch or your personal page, if you would like to share that. Sure. So uh, for Geek Girl Brunch uh, NYC, it's GGBNYC through all platforms. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and I believe Geek Girl Brunch also has a Tumblr. And Geek Girl Brunch can also be found on all those other platforms. Mm-hmm. I, to the ire of all of my friends, do <laughs> don't know about social branding very well. <laughs> so I <we> have <laughs> different <laughs> usernames, but... So Instagram is the amazing kin, um, um, and that's the amazing, and then K-I-N, um, and then on Twitter, I'm Slow Paced Walker, um, because I really like zombies when I created a Twitter, so, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> um, that. But 
Uh, if you want to follow me for my rants and thoughts on a lot of things, um, also I'll be doing a lot more baking, uh, especially as we are in so- social isolation and quarantine. Um, so if you want some insights, I do a lot of nerdy baking, um, and I'll be sharing a lot more of that soon. Yes. Thank you so much for taking your time out and being on this episode. I really appreciate it because I cannot stress this enough. Geek Girl Brunch has created such a positive and welcoming community, especially in the political climate that we've been in for the last few years with everything going on. It's so nice to know that you have friends that you can count on, um, a safe space that you can go to and people to talk to where you won't feel threatened or in any shape, in any way feel as though your ideas are not valid. So. Again, I just want to say thank you to both of you for all the work that you've done in founding and continuing on Geek Girl Brunch. Of course. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yay! So um, please take a moment to subscribe, review, and rate us. It's the easiest way to support our podcast. Let us know what your favorite thing about our podcast is in a review on Apple Podcasts or, or on our Facebook page. If you want to chat with us about this episode, our social medias are Fandom Wellness on Twitter, Fandom and Wellness on Instagram, Fandom and Wellness on Facebook. You can also find me at Classy Rebel Design, Jenny at Fan Mailbox, and Danielle at Little Petal, all on Instagram. If you want bonus content, join our fandom family at patreon.com forward slash fandom and wellness for Patreon exclusive geek sessions. And remember, be kind and take no shit. Yes! (laughs) Awesome.